Hi people, it's me, Anya. My pronouns are she and her, and welcome back to my channel for a new recent weeds video. The first book on this list is called There Goes the Neighborhood. The story is a YA contemporary following a young black main character who creates a fake gang with her best friends to scale off developers, which seems to be going well, until a murder is blamed on this fake gang. And the story talks about gentrification, which is so important because it happens all the time, so it's so relevant. This book is absolutely so good. I really, really enjoyed it. I had really high expectations because prior to this, I had recently read Jade's previous book. Actually, this is her debut, and the book that I read previously was her second book, I believe, All Shouts Echo, and it was so good. So anyway, this book definitely lived up to those expectations, and it was so excellent, and it's so well done. The writing is so digestible and it's so easy to read, which is literally what digestible means. I don't know why I said two words in the same sentence that mean the same thing. But anyway, the characters are so well developed and so distinct. The romance is so cute and it's so well paced. I typically don't enjoy best friends to lovers, but this book did it so well because their chemistry made so much sense. The friendship between the trio was so wholesome and so cute. The plot is so engaging. The mystery and everything was so well done. This book is absolutely so good. So with that said, I rated it four out of five stars. I'm not sure if I would prefer this book or her second book, but either way, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on the list is called The Ghost of You. This story is a YA contemplative following a young transgender main character who is navigating a fracturing friendship, a new romance, as well as grief. I enjoyed this book and I rated it four stars, but I will definitely say that I preferred the author's debut, if I can give you that, which I read last year, just because that book is more lighthearted than this book. Now, some people might prefer hard-hitting books over lighthearted books, and for me personally, I don't think I quite, like, prefer necessarily one over the other. It's just that with this book specifically, the themes of sexual abuse and sexual harassment were mentioned a few times. And me personally, like I wasn't as pleasant as maybe I could have been while reading those things. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. But basically, aside from that, the plot is so engaging and so intriguing. The romance is so cute and it's so well paced. I love a good queer T for T romance. The friendships are lovely. The queer representation is so great and so awesome. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. This book is really, really good. I would definitely highly, highly recommend it, but just be wary of the trigger warnings like I mentioned earlier. So anyway, with that said, I rated this book four out of five stars and I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Firebirds. For those who don't know, this book is a YA historical fantasy sequel to Nightbirds, which I read last November. And I absolutely loved it so much. I rated this book four to five stars because first of all, the 1920s setting was so atmospheric and so magical and so well done. The characters are so well developed and so distinct. All of the multiple perspectives worked so well and all of their individual romances were so cute and so well paced. The queer representation is well done and it's so good. Like this book is absolutely so excellent. I definitely preferred it over the prequel because it's so magical and it's so fantastical and it's so riveting. Like the mystery and the magic system and everything were done so well. I will gladly read more from this author in the future because they are literally so talented. This duology is so underrated and it deserves so much more hype because I just really, really enjoyed it so much. So anyway, with that said, I rated this book four out of five stars and I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The next book on this list is called Yellow Face. For those who don't know, this book is an adult literary fiction that follows a white author who takes a draft from her deceased Asian acquaintance and publishes it, passing it off as her own work. And honestly, first of all, I think this story is so compelling and it's so fascinating and it's so self-aware and I would bring conversations about gatekeeping and who gets to represent who to the table, but June is a little criminal, so I'm not going to do that. Second of all, after learning about scandals like Freitas Moon and like 
Elizabeth Holmes, who didn't pretend to be a, a different race than she is, by the way, but she is definitely a fraud. This story is so relevant and like it's so good. Like it's so compelling. The plot is so engaging. The ways in which June like defends herself is almost fascinating and it makes her so much more authentic and less like some cartoony Disney villain and more like a real person, if that makes any sense. This book is so good and it definitely dissolves all the type and so much more. And with that said, I rated it four to five stars. I knew after reading Babel earlier this year that I wanted to read more books by Rebecca. I don't know why I just refer to this author by her first name as if we're on first name basis, as if she has any idea who I am. But like, she's a genius and this book is no exception. So anyway, with that said, I would definitely highly, highly recommend it. The last book on this list, and certainly the least, is called Desert Echoes. This story is a YA contemporary following a young, gay, Iranian main character who's investigating what happened to his ex-boyfriend two years ago. Honestly, I didn't really like this book as much as I was really expecting to because first of all, I think this story would have been more compelling had it been set in chronological order and I think the flashbacks didn't really give me anything I didn't already know for the most part, if that makes any sense. So the plot, in my opinion, wasn't as engaging as it really could have been. The characters were well developed and distinct and like the romance, the endgame romance, first of all, came out of nowhere to me. Where was the connection? Where's the chemistry? The romantic chemistry? It came out of fucking nowhere and it honestly gave me whiplash. What the fuck was that? I don't understand. Why was that there? I don't like that. But I did like the best friendship. Emphasis on friendship. No romance. No romance. I didn't like that. Anyway, other than that, basically, I was disappointed by this book. I rated it three stars. I didn't like it. So there you have it. So in conclusion, honestly, my September reading month so far has not been as fruitful as I was really expecting it to be. But it's also only the 12th of September, so I'm being too hard on myself again, which I tend to do historically, because I often think that I don't read enough, which I know is rather daft of me to think, because I do read more than the average reader, objectively. So even my bad reading months are better than the average reader. So really, I shouldn't complain, but then I do. So anyway, rant over. In conclusion, if you enjoy this video, please don't hesitate to give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below the pineapple emoji if you made it all the way to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!